So I'll give you guys a story. And this, I believe, is the moment, truly the moment I think I became wealthy. Like, like I remember, no, you know what? This is the moment I became wealthy. I remember this exact moment. And this is the moment I think I became rich. It wasn't, over, it wasn't like over three, four, five, six months a year. It was a moment. Here's the moment. It's December 20, actually pretty much January. Almost, oh, December. It's like December 27th, 2020. I just finished having COVID. I got out of, I just got out of a relationship. Um, lost all my one-on-one clients for some reason. Everything was pretty much going to shit for some reason. Everything was going to shit. Can you go back? All right, everything was going to shit. And I felt horrible, right? So my health is bad. That immediately puts me kind of in, you know, a lower place. I'm starting to not feel good. I get out of a relationship. That's a change. I lose all my clients because at the time, it's not like I had marketing. I was, was all on Instagram. I'm like, what am I going to do? And I remember I had $1,000 in cash saved up. I had put it in a sock of mine. And I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm fucked, okay? I'm living in my massive mansion. Rent's due on the first. All the payroll for my employees is due on the first. All my bills are due on the first. And I'm not going to make my bills. There's no way I'm going to make my bills. My rent minimum is $12,500. Payroll, expenses, cars, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked, right? So I have about $1,000 left in, my, in cash. It was, it was in hundreds, I remember. And two years ago today, I bought this Aston Martin. So I decided, and by the way, prior to this whole thing, I had amazing months, right? I had gone from 23K a month in January to February 25K to March 45K to April. I made uh, 60K. And then I made 80K, 120K, 160K, 220K, all the way to 280K. And I ended up spending most of it, right? You know, like an idiot. What would you do if you were 22 and you were making that kind of money? You'd probably spend it. So I spent it. I spent it on cars. I spent it on, on, on traveling. I spent it on clothes. I spent it on jewelry. You know, nonsense that I was just, I was getting out of my system. So, you know, you ask, well, where all the money I'd made gone? Well, that's where it went. So I had $1,000 left. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I was in abundance. I, I didn't ever anticipate that money wouldn't come back. And I, I get in this Aston Martin and I have no gas in it. And I'm like, all right. So I drive for 10 minutes. I said, I'm just going to go on a drive and try and get my mind in the right place. Cause I hadn't really left my house this month because of COVID. I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, you know, it's still early ish, uh, for the virus. So I was trying to not kill anyone. And I'm like, I'll just be home. So I was home for the most part. And I, I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to leave. So I get in my car, I'm driving. And I pull into this gas station uh, on the way to Malibu. And I'm getting out of my car. I go into the gas station. I give them the cash. And I'm filling up my car. And I'm outside. I'm putting gas in my Aston Martin. I'm dressed nice. You know, I have nice clothes still. (laughs) And uh, I'm looking. And there's a woman who's about 66 years old. She's standing there with her shopping cart. She's homeless. She has jeans. And she has rips in her jeans. Like pretty much one of them. It looks like a slit completely from her knee all the way down her ankle. You know, she has one pair of shoes on. The other one is just a sock and the sock has her toes coming through it because it has holes. And she's holding a box of ice cream and she's just eating the ice cream before it melts. And, you know, I'm just looking at her and she's like 65 years old. And I, I'm like, you know, is it because she can't work? You know, no, it's not. Be, I mean, it, it's not because she's on drugs. It's not because of any of this. Like she wasn't, she wasn't that type of person. She just looked like someone who, who didn't have a family, someone wasn't taking care of it. I'm looking at her and I'm feeling my, I'm just heartbroken over this. I, I'm like, what if this was my mom? What if this was someone else's mom? You know, why isn't, where's her family? Where, where are her kids? Why isn't someone taking care of this lady? And I was just looking at her and she's eating ice cream. That's all she has, you know, food. And then the rest is like some clothes tossed into the shopping cart. And it's, it's about 75 degrees outside. It's just this morning, you know, warm air. And I I look and I have about $900 left. That's all I have. And I'm just looking at it. And part of me was just like, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here stressed about how I'm not going to make my rent in my mansion while I go to, you know, PCH to drive my Aston Martin, you know, in, in expensive clothes. And this lady doesn't even have a pair of shoes. And she's eating ice cream before it melts. And, and I, I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't like I, I was sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to go give this money away. I was going to, I was going to save this money. But, you know, Part of me immediately just said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to her. So I took the $900, I walked up to her and I just, I handed it to her, it was folded. And, and I said, I hope you have an amazing day. And she has looked at me, you know, she was shocked. She didn't say anything, but you could see she was getting emotional and she was about to cry. And I, I didn't want to stay, I just, I left. So I left because I didn't want her to feel like I'm, you know, I'm doing it for some kind of recognition. I didn't want her to feel embarrassed and I could see she was a little bit embarrassed. 
you know, probably because she didn't want to be in this position. And I just get in my car and I drive away. And, you know, I had a full tank of gas. I had no money left. And it, literally, I'm like, where am I going to eat? Obviously, I can go to my parents' house. But, you know, I was just, I was in a position where I'm like, I'm literally fucked. But I felt amazing. And, you know, I drove around for like two hours. And I made a story, like I posted an Instagram story. And I was in a really good mood. I was almost in tears because I, I was like, wow, that's so sad. And I was focused on how can I, how can I give more to her? How can I give more to people like that? What can I do to make more to give people like that? And I, I just talked about generosity on Instagram. And I made a call to action. I said, if anyone wants to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know, shoot me a DM. And I just put my phone away and I was listening to music. I put my phone on airplane mode. <clears throat> I didn't want anyone to call me. I just put the windows down. I was driving on PCH and I was just focusing on all the things that I was grateful for. And I started to make this shift and I, and I started to focus on where I wanted to go, right? I'm like, okay, well, look, this is where I'm at. Where do I want to go? And finally, I come back home like three hours later and I turn my phone off of airplane mode. I turn it, on, back, you know, turn it back on pretty much. And I get flooded with all these DMs. You know, about 15 people had sent me a message saying they want to work with me one on one. And, you know, at the time I was very, very open. Like I was charging $30,000 a month for one on one. And I hop on call after call after call that day. And I was closing 30,000, 30,000, 30,000. And in a day I made almost $300,000, literally the same day. And <clears throat> I just remember if I had not given to her, I would not have felt the emotions I felt, which compelled me to make that story and put me in abundance. But that was, it wasn't the day I became wealthy because I made $300,000. It was the day I became wealthy because after that, I said, if I ever get into scarcity again, if I ever get stressed out again, if I ever get, for some reason, I come to the bottom of the hierarchy again, right? Or the pyramid, I need to snap out of it. And the only way to snap out of it is to give. You must give, right? And it always comes back. You know, I always say the more you give, the more you get. And, you know, ever since then, doesn't matter what my situation is financially, if I could pay for the meal with my friends, I will. If I can tip someone, I'll always tip at least $100 or $200, depending on the bill. If the bill is bigger, I'll tip more. But <clears throat> even if the bill is $30, I'll tip at least $100, right? And this is just how I am. I remember when I was working valet and people would give me a $20 or $30 tip, I was, I was whoa, shocked. And I remember one time, you know, all my valet friends were lazy. They weren't going to drive cars. And I'm like, why aren't you guys working? Like, you know, we have to go get the cars. And I would just run back and forth. And I'm doing all the work. And, you know, we're all getting paid the same. We all split the tips at the end. And I end up bringing this guy. It was like a, I think it was like a Honda Accord or something. So I go get this Honda Accord. I bring it. And the guy tips me $200. Like literally gives me $200. And that was pretty much my paycheck for, for like a week and a half, two weeks of work. And he just gave me $200. And I was just like... I didn't even understand what I was looking at. I'm like, is, is this really for me? And I remember how it made me feel, even though we split the tips, it made me feel amazing. And I said, well, what if I could give someone else that feel? And it gave me confidence. It gave me more confidence that I can make more money in a short amount of time. I said, well, what if I could replicate this? What, what if I could get someone to give me more? And I, it got me thinking, right? And here's the thing. Oftentimes we get stuck into a mindset where we're focused on the wrong thing. Some stimulus happens in our life. Something's going, going on and it's, it's forcing us unconsciously to come into this place <clears throat> where we're literally in scarcity, where you're focused on what's not going to work out for you. And this is the biggest concern I have is that when you want something, you have to focus on it. You get what you focus on. If I focus on what I don't want, that's exactly what I'm going to get. Because when you focus on what you don't want, it puts you in a state that tells your brain to only think as at the level of which you are at. So someone at a level five confidence can only function or think at a level five confidence. Someone who's at the bottom of the hierarchy or in the middle or at the top can only process and understand the surroundings or the environment in that moment up until that level, right? In your paradigm. How you expand your paradigm, how you expand your, your, your ability to see things is to gain that level of clarity where you can be more confident, where you can be more abundant, and then your mind says, oh, now I can go get it. So how do you tap into that abundance today? And that's what I want to talk about because abundance creates abundance. Scarcity creates every problem you could possibly imagine. It creates poverty. It creates heartbreak. It creates a lack of health. It creates everything you don't want. Because here's the thing. You want to talk about it scientifically? I'll tell you scientifically. When you're in scarcity, are you stressed out? <clears throat> yes, we are. When you're stressed out, what chemicals go through your body? Well, 
when you're stressed, there's two chemicals in a fight or flight response that are released in your body, two main chemicals. The first one is norepinephrine, adrenaline. The set, right, they call it an EpiPen. An EpiPen, epinephrine, right? Adrenaline. The second one is cortisol. Here's what happens when cortisol is released into your blood. First of all, your immune system gets suppressed. Your body thinks you're about to fight a, a saber-toothed tiger. You need every ounce of energy that you could possibly have. So your body says, stop digestion. You're not digesting food anymore. Your body also says, let's move all the blood to our internal organs, right? So we're going to move our blood from our extremities to our internal organs. And that way we can make sure that we have enough oxygen in the parts of our body that's necessary. The next thing that happens is your hair stops growing, your nails stop growing. All of these things happen. Now, it was only designed, your body is not designed to be in that state for long periods of time. It's designed to be in that state for tops maybe, <clears throat> you know, an hour when you're at war or a fight. Not for weeks or months. So if for weeks or months you're barely sleeping because you're stressed and your immune system's weak, what is going to happen? You're going to get sick. The ultimate way to cure cancer, for example, is to prevent it. And the ultimate way to not get sick is to not be stressed. You must take care of your health. You must get into abundance. You must be in a place where you feel better. You want to talk about health? Well, testosterone is vital for a male's health. What happens when a male is more confident? Well, their testosterone levels rise two to three times what it would be just from being more confident. It rises two to three times more than what it would be if you were not confident. If you tell your brain you are here, your testosterone levels shoot up. Why is it you see a se some seven-year-olds who just look jacked, still have crazy testosterone levels, versus you know some 25-year-old who's just, just totally unhealthy and simping and has low testosterone? What is the difference between a seven-year-old and a 25-year-old? 25-year-old should have way more, but naturally should have way more testosterone than a seven-year-old. What is it? It's mindset. Mindset, mindset, mindset. I have some of the highest testosterone levels. Literally, I took a blood test and like your testosterone is over 850. That's insane numbers for natural testosterone. Insane numbers. And I'm not the leanest person. I'm about 13, 14% body fat. If I was 9, 10% body fat, I'd have even more testosterone. Right? But they're like, well, what is it? Well, I've had this testosterone from when I was 15, when I worked on my confidence. I remember as soon as I became confident, I gained muscle. Literally, instantly. Instantly, I would go to the gym, I, I don't have to do anything. I haven't gone to the gym in weeks, and I look jacked. Why? Not because I do anything, because I'm able to sustain it, right? Here's the thing though, forget the body. What about your e economic situation? What about your lifestyle? Right? What is it about money that is so appealing to people? People are like, oh wow, Marcel, you have nice cars, you live in a nice house, you travel a lot, you have, you have cool jewelry. What, what is it? It's not the money that attracts people. People always get confused. It's not the money that people are attracted to because I had the same type of people looking into what I was doing when I was younger. People are like, Marcel, you're, you were so young when you started. How did you have a problem getting clients? I never had a problem. I never had a problem because I was confident. People att were attracted to my being, right? My being is what created my lifestyle and that's what I want you to understand. It's, it's who you become. So people look at it. What is it that's appealing about, about any of that? Well, if you can have all of these things, it's not that it's, a lot of people think, okay, hey, what is a luxury? People think a luxury is something that's, that's a bonus, it's a plus, it's supposed to make your life better. And in some ways it will, but your, a luxury does not take care of you, right? It, it is a liability, it is not an asset, right? The mansion I live in is not an asset. If I stop paying for my mansion, my mansion's not gonna take care of me, I'm gonna lose the mansion. If I stop paying for my cars, it's not gonna take care of me, I'm gonna lose it. So to be able to kind of enjoy this lifestyle, and almost be indifferent to it, kind of jaded to these things, that tells people, hey, the amount of energy that needs to be expended for him to be able to support this lifestyle consistently and even grow is pretty high. And if he does it almost nonchalantly, well, therefore it must be pretty normal for him. There, there must be a lot, he must have the ability to expend a lot of energy. Now, if I was in scarcity, instantaneously I wouldn't be able to do this. I would focus on losing everything. I would all of a sudden get, in, you know, I'd be in very, very deep shit. And this is the point. If you get into a place where you are in abundance, you will thrive. If you get into a place where you are in scarcity, you will lose everything you have over time. If you say I'm on a downward spiral, I'm losing everything, about to lose everything. You know, one of my clients hit me up the other day and he goes, I'm about to go bankrupt. And I'm like, what do you mean you're about to go bankrupt? 
And he's like, yeah, I'm about to go bankrupt. Uh, I have seven days to come up with $60,000. Now this is the same client that I've seen make $600,000 in a week. And he's telling me he's worried about making $60,000 in a week. He's made 600,000 in front of me in a week, but he can't, he can't make $60,000 or his business is going to fail. Right? So I spoke to him and I said, look, you're in scarcity, hypnotized him, helped him get into abundance. In an hour, he find a solution in an hour. It's not hard to find a solution. The problem is if you can't think your way beyond a certain paradigm, you can't think big enough. You can't be in that place. So if I can't think my way past that, what's going to happen? For instance, someone who's here might only see a salary up to, you know, let's just say 120K. Excuse that, 120K. So that's 120K a year, right? Or someone up here can have, you know, $10 billion. And I'm not even kidding, that's literally, that's literally a difference, right? So what, what is it? Is it that, oh, as soon as I get into this position, I'm gonna have $10 billion? Absolutely not. Either way, it's gonna take time, right? Because if I go here, time's gonna go by no matter what. However, if I have a career and I'm getting $120,000 salary, maybe I started at 60 or 70 or 75, it might take me 20 years before I get to the salary of 120K. It might take me 20 years before I get there. But if I had this paradigm, it might take me 20 years to get to 10 billion. The time will go by anyways. The difference is, where was I the most amount of time? Right? Was I in this part of the hierarchy? Where was my paradigm? Was my paradigm here? Or was it here? Now, why that's important to understand is because consistency equals outcome. And whatever you consistently do is what's going to consistently give you an outcome. Now, most people operate in a scarcity mindset for a long period of time and for a very short burst, short burst, right? We'll see, we'll see something like this, almost like intervals, right? So people will be down here and then an interval of success and then come back down here and they'll have interval of success and then come back down here and that's their life. They'll have short spurts when they absolutely need it and they'll perform, but instead of it looking the opposite where you're constantly performing and you maybe have a few dips, but you come back to it, right? So what's the difference and how do you maintain that lifestyle? How do you maintain that mindset? How do you create what you want? At the end of the day, you want to talk about making money. That's fine. Anyone can make money. Money is actually very easy to make. It is not hard at all. And people might be like, well, Marcel, you say that. No, no, it's really not hard. Making money is the easiest thing in the world. Keeping money, a little bit harder, <laughs> but making money is pretty easy. You say it's not, that's because you haven't, you haven't tried it. You haven't thought the way you should be thinking. If you think the right way, you have the right mindset, it becomes easy. You might say, well, how is it easy? Well, it's not hard to ask someone for something. It's not hard to be like, hey guys, you know, uh, pay me. Pay me what I'm worth. People will pay you. So what, what is the difference between someone who thinks in scarcity or not? It's all a pattern of focus. You, your pattern of focus creates the meaning. So for instance, and I've given you guys this example before, I'll give it to you again briefly. So, you know, I, hopefully you guys can see this number. If you were to look at this and you were to try to memorize this number, one number at a time, what would you say? Could you do it? Probably not. But if I told you it was 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, you would memorize it in a heartbeat. But look at how hard it was a second ago. It was hard to memorize it when you look at it individually and now it became easy. Now that's a different pattern of focus. There are more efficient patterns of focus when you go up here. Someone down here is hyper-focused on small things. It's called chunking down. So most people chunk down. Think of your house. If you had to memorize everything in your house, what do you do? You start with the couch. You then you look at the things on the couch. Then you think about the TV in the same room. Then you think about the dining table. Then you go to the kitchen. You're like, where are the pots and pans? Versus just seeing it as your house. If I just see it as my house, what happens? It's so much easier to memorize because now I could chunk down. It's one piece of data, house. And I could go, there's this room, this room, this room. There's this in this room. You can always zoom in. Problem people have is they're so zoomed in, they can't figure it out. Take a Google Earth, home, like, you know, you look at Google Earth, for example. Everyone knows what that is on Google Maps, right? Raise your hand, you know what that is. We look at that. Now, you're looking at the map, and you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And you see, like, 
you know, in Africa, 20 dead people because these, you know, soldiers have slaughtered them on Google Earth, you know, on the satellite, right? Slaughter these people and you're zoomed in. You're going to feel like shit. So maybe you, you know, move to the side a little bit. You're still in that shitty area in Africa and you'll do this for hours and hours and hours until you finally get out of Africa and you're looking at somewhere more beautiful. Now you look at that, you zoom out and you go to Beverly Hills and you zoom in on Beverly Hills. You feel pretty good, right? What's the difference? Difference is now all of a sudden, I have an eyelash in my eye, uh, all of a sudden you, you're able to, to take the problem, move up, see everything and zoom in on the solution. Most people are stuck on the problem. They cannot move their focus from the problem. Therefore, they cannot find the solution. Your brain only has so much mental capital. We can only process 150 bits of information every second. That's it. If this mental capital is taken up, can we make sure they see that? Because I don't think they see any part of this board. They see that? Can you guys see that? No, they can't. They're all nodding no. They can't see the bottom. Yeah, thank you. All right. So your brain only processes 150 bits of information every second. All right. Now, here's the thing. If I take up even 10% or 20% of that, which you probably take up more, but let's just say I'm taking up 20% of that, thinking about my problems. Now I only have 80% left to find a solution. But here's the catch. If I focus on my problems, this 150 bits changes. It becomes more like 40 just plain 40 bits because your mental capital and bandwidth decreases. When you are stressed, what you're doing is you're activating this part of the mind, the amygdala. You're not activating the frontal cortex as much. So what happens is your mental capital actually decreases. Your ability to process things gets weaker. A computer, the CPU, the, the brain of the computer is measured by what we call gigahertz. One gigahertz is a billion a billion additions and subtractions every second. So when you see one zero, one zero, one zero, it does a billion of that a second. That's what a one gigahertz processor does, right? Your phone, your iPhone has a, uh, I believe it's a quad core, so four, four, four CPUs clocked at 2.2 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. So 2.4 billion additions and subtractions a second, right? It can process. So imagine that now as your brain. We'll make it simple. Just one gigahertz is what your brain can process. Now you're stressed. You just pretty much imagine a computer overheating. What does it do? It, it actually, so it clocks itself, which means it's kind of retuning itself to a slower, less powerful processing power to make sure it cools off. So the computer starts to overheat, it needs to actually lower the, the, the power that it's expending. So if it's at 2.4 gigahertz, it might go down to one gigahertz. Or even, you know, um, it like, it, it's, it's one of those things that when you get stressed, your brain actually does this. It contracts. It contracts its ability because it needs to get hyper-focused on what's happening. Nothing else matters anymore. And it says, look, let's be efficient. If you're about to die and there's a saber-toothed tiger, your brain isn't thinking about how you're going to go make money. It's not important. It's not relevant to the brain. It's like, this is not important. So what it does is it says, hey, you need to contract. Only focus on this. And now your mental bandwidth is now collapsing. You have less computing power to find solutions. So you need to get yourself back into abundance in order to think your way out of the problem. The problem you, you have persists because you're stuck. I know every time I'm in, stre I'm in stress, and when I'm in abundance, I want to do something. In 10 seconds, I have solution after solution after solution. Money, money, money. Everything comes my way, right? I could come up with it in two seconds. When I'm in, when I'm in stress, when I'm in scarcity, right? My brain starts to go there. I want to think, and what does my brain do? It says, no, don't think about it. Don't think about it. I actually push myself out of it. I, 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 the solution's about to pop up and I feel like I'm tired. I'm like, oh, I need to sleep. I need a nap. I can't, I can't think about it. And I go, ah, oh, you know what? You know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what happens when I'm in scarcity. I, I can't even conceptualize what I want. So when you are in the right mindset, not only do you see things the right way, but you allow yourself to actually improve. Now, Here's the thing. Scarcity manifests itself in dating as well. How does it manifest itself in dating? You're in a relationship. You've been fucked over. You've been with someone who lowered your self-esteem, who completely demolished your self-worth. And you know, now they're potentially cheating on you or whatever it is, right? 
your pattern of focus will be to keep the thing that's bad for you. How do I hold on to this horrible thing? Because you don't believe you'll get something else. That is the main principle here. Abundance is simple. It is, I can let go of what I have so I can get more of what I want. More of it is coming. I won't spend money if I don't believe I'm going to make money. I won't break up with someone who is not good for me if I don't believe I could attract someone better. I won't let go of my bad habits if I don't believe that it's either easy or easier or better to have better new habits. So your brain is very, very simple. It does what it needs to do in order to preserve its resources, reproductive resources and survival resources, money and your ability to prove relationships. If your brain has a negative association to good things, it won't let go of the bad things, right? And here's what a positive association means. If I am in this state, and you're gonna to talk to me about becoming a CEO and a billionaire, what homeless guy is gonna think about it? They're not gonna process what you're saying. You go tell a hobo right now, hey, what's up, man? You know, he's been doing drugs, he's like drunk out of his mind. Hey, bro, I'm gonna make you a CEO of a multi billion dollar company. What's he gonna do? <laughs> what's he gonna do? He's gonna get up and he's gonna go do it? He's gonna think about it? He's gonna be like, yeah, you know what? We're gonna make some adjustments. We're gonna fire the current executive staff. We're gonna hire some new people. We're gonna move, you know, we're, we're gonna move the market. We're gonna do A, B, and C. He's not gonna do that. His brain's gonna not conceptualize what is happening. Why? Because he's not in that paradigm. Now, you take someone here, or even here, they're more likely to understand it. They're more likely to be there because they've been close enough, right? Now, someone in the middle, let's say, might kind of move up, up and down, but it'll, you know, he'll never go down here or she'll never go down here, but they'll kind of move up and down, you know, but they'll hover around this area. Someone here will kind of move up and down. Someone here will move up and down. You need to work your way up. Now, how do you do that? And that's, that's the key. Well, in order to do that, you have to kind of understand that the brain does something interesting. It becomes what you are, right? So if I want to be a millionaire, I must be a millionaire right now. How does that look psychologically? Well, if I am going to self-actualize, I'm going to be here. What does that look like? What does it look like for me? Well, do I pay the bill? Do I buy what I want? I was working with a startup. This company went from 30 million to a billion in under 10 months. The first thing I did, on the, like the second call I had with the CEO, <laughs> I literally tell him, you're gonna double your salary from $150,000 a year to $300,000 a year. And your COO is also gonna double his salary. And he's like, oh shit, okay. And then a month later, I said, double your salary again. I also told him, move out of the apartment you're at and go to a sick ass apartment overlooking you know, he was in a penthouse overlooking the San Francisco um, Golden Gate Bridge. And now, I mean, the company is unreal. He's made a fortune. <laughs> he can retire. Literally, he could retire today and never have to lift a finger again. He could spend money every day and never run out of money for the rest of his life. Ten months. He had the potential but didn't do it. I saw this interesting video yesterday. And I've seen this video a few times, but I really like this metaphor. You know, fleas have a 36 inch vertical. If you put them into a jar or a cup and they'll start bouncing and hitting the ceiling, they'll eventually adjust and only, you know, maybe jump four or five inches. And if they have kids, they'll do the same, right? It reminds me of this other metaphor where you have this elephant, when they're a baby, they tie them with this small rope and this little thing in the ground. As they get bigger, they can literally lift their hand up and you know, the rope just breaks in a second. But because they don't believe it's possible, they won't. These are what limiting beliefs look like. And limiting beliefs are very real because they will limit you depending on where you're at in your paradigm. So if I'm in a lower paradigm, I will actually be limited. I, I sometimes make this example at seminars. I will bring someone up on stage and I will hypnotize them to be stuck to the ground. They cannot move from where they're at. And when I do that, I'm like, move. There's nothing holding them, no glue, no cement, nothing but their mind. Their mind is keeping them stuck. If you feel stuck, it's because your mind is limiting you, because you are not in abundance. You are not in a position where you say, all right, who the fuck do I need to be right now? And here's the thing, when you start to do that, you think it's comfortable? You think your brain says, hey, yeah, let me just go up this, this, this ladder and feel comfortable. Absolutely not. It doesn't feel good. Why not? Well, if I were to go back into, you know, back in the day and I were to be in a tribe and all of a sudden I say, you know what, tribal leaders, I'm now the tribal leader. I am, you know, like I, I go to like, I don't know, let's just say uh, Timbuktu is his name, right? 
I go to Timbuktu and I'm like, I am the tribal leader. He's going to take a fucking club and beat me over the fucking head till I die. Right? I'm dead. I'm done. So my brain says, don't do that. That is not the right thing. So your DNA doesn't evolve as quickly as society has been evolving. Okay? Modern civilization is about 5,000 years old. <laughs> this generation, of, like, like what we have now, cars, all that, it's a little over 100 years old, guys. It's very, very new. Flying, cars, all that, that's all new. Things are moving so fast. Imagine someone who was born 110 years ago seeing today. I'm talking to a fucking camera. I'm literally looking into a camera and you guys see me in real time. Right? It's mind boggling. So the brain isn't adapting as fast as the environment. So your brain takes time to gain status. It can't understand it. So you have to consistently feed it. You have to control it. You can't let your instincts or your DNA control you. And that's what this is. So the way to jam your brain, literally jam your brain into abundance is to start to take care of others or give back. When you do that, when you spend more, when you go above your means, your brain is now forced to adapt in order to survive. We are very adaptable. Your brain is hyper resourceful. It will literally find anything it needs like this. If you decide to commit, it is uncomfortable to stay where you're at and then out of nowhere, jump. It's uncomfortable to be like, hey, my bills were 2,000 a month, now they're 30,000 a month. It is uncomfortable to decide, oh my God, I am now making a massive shift in my life. I'm in a relationship, I'm going to walk away because that's not good for me. These are uncomfortable things to do because the brain has either never done it before or has never entered the paradigm where this becomes normal. You look at someone like, you know, a king. If a king is unhappy with the person he's with, do you think he's going to sleep alone ever in his whole life? Probably not. He's the king. He could have whatever he wants, right? You look at Adele. It doesn't matter if you find Adele attractive. What guy would not want to be with Adele if she's like, hey, let's go? Or even Oprah, right? Abundance. They're in an abundant place. The only people that would say no to that is an abundant person. The reason I bring this up is because, now obviously this is, is a, like an example. This may not apply to everyone, but you're getting the point. Point is, is when you are in that state, you are more attractive. You will attract whatever you want. I don't just mean attractive to people intimately. I mean attracting money. You will attract what you want. You become a magnet for the life you desire. When you level up, you become a magnet for the things you want to attract into your life. Most people are stuck in a paradigm where they repel it because they don't deserve it. And you won't deserve it, not because you don't think you should have it or don't want it, but because your brain won't let you leave a certain paradigm and you get stuck at that level. So if I'm stuck at this level, not only I can't think my way beyond that, I won't even allow myself to attract it. There will be opportunities and this is what my brain will say. It'll say, you know, Oh, I can't do that. I don't know enough. I'm not experienced enough. This isn't, you know, the right time. Why would they work with me? You feel like an imposter. You only feel like an imposter because you yourself haven't gained the status, the confidence, or the abundance to say, this is me. I deserve this. I'm the best. Give it to me, right? Here's the shocking thing, and this is absolutely shocking to me. Most people, when faced with the opportunity to grow, reject it. They will ruin it. Self-sabotage is one of the most common problems. I see in every single person's life. You find something that's actually very good for you, but because it is beyond your reach, beyond your paradigm, you either can't appreciate it, so you'll try and rationalize it and you'll say, there's no way this is real, this must be a fraud, this must be not good enough, there must be, there, this must be something wrong with the person I'm about to go out with, this doesn't make sense, they wouldn't stay with me, there's no future here, right? Your brain starts to tell you things because you're not in that paradigm, and then what do you do? You sabotage, you try to ruin it. Whereas if you level up and these things come into your life, it's normal, I have an abundance of it. I'm not gonna cling on to this, I'm not attached to any outcome, therefore I'm not attached to the people I'm with, I'm not attached to money, I'm not attached to anything because whatever I want, I'll get more of it. Life is a buffet and it's literally all you can eat, but you have to pay the price in order to eat at the restaurant, right? And the restaurant of abundance cost what? It costs a certain level of confidence. It costs a certain level of delusion. Now you might say it's delusional to think that you have and can have everything you want. 
I believe it's delusional to say that you can't. It's delusional to sit there and think that you must stay in a lower paradigm. Ironically, look at what happens with the pyramid. Is it getting bigger or smaller at the top? It's smaller because less people are at the top. Less people at the top because it takes more to get to that mindset. But here's the funny thing, your comfort zone's uncomfortable. So you might as well get a little bit more uncomfortable and get to the next level. I always, I always say this, abundance is a precursor or catalyst to success. The moment you get into abundance is the moment you attract everything you want in your life.